Okay, so what I decided to do today was um, start going through lead strategy. I've had a few people asking when I was on making the opt-in page what we're actually doing, why we're making an opt-in page and all this sort of thing. Now, I did sort of step ahead of myself a little bit when I give you the opt-in page. The reason being is that I wanted you to have something where we start getting leads. So we want to get as many leads as what we possibly can straight to your particular office, right? Um, and what I might have to do is give a couple of links. Right, so what we're going to be doing is we're all talking about lead strategy today. So what we basically need to remember is that every business needs new leads, right? Without your leads, then you're pretty much not going to be making any money. So this is a way of doing this. We're going to start for free, and then we're going to start going into the more paid versions, right? Because obviously not everybody arrives with a load of money that they're ready to start spending on ads and whatnot. Ads is the fastest way to scale up. But we're going to go through free versions before we start going into ads, right? Just in case you guys don't want to spend any money. So now if you follow along with what I'm about to teach you over the next few days, you will be successful. You will drive traffic. And because I've already given you all of the lead magnets and things such as this, you will be able to start making sales. This is the most important part. Now, there's two people who fail on any sort of course. And one's the skeptics. <clears throat> so if you are normally skeptical, Please try and get that out of your head. And the other one is the perfectionists, right? If you're trying to get everything perfect, you will not succeed. There is nobody who can ever have anything perfect. Um, nobody can have anything perfect to get it working. It's always a case of imperfect action will always beat perfect inaction, right? No matter what you're doing, you need to take action on it. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of tips what I think, well, how I've had success with the course that I've done before as well near the end of this one. So what we want to accomplish is we want to build a list. The money is in the list, right? You've heard it many, many times before. You're probably sick of people saying this, money's in the list. And it is a difficult thing to try and get your head around. Um, I know I tried this so many times and I wasn't getting it um, for at least the first year of me trying to actually do marketing, affiliate marketing. Now, what you'll actually find is your email list, if done or cash, then it's worth about one pound, one dollar per person per month, right? So that's one, one dollar per person per month, which is pretty decent. That's if you're doing an average kind of email list. Now, a messenger that shoots up to seven dollars per person per month. Now, there is a slight disadvantage with Messenger. Obviously, you're going to be thinking, why is he telling us a disadvantage with Messenger when his software is Messenger? One of the disadvantages with Messenger is you don't actually own that list which is why it's vital to get their email addresses. So say, for example, if you ever get taken off, let's take Donald Trump, for example. Donald Trump, when he was on Twitter, had millions of followers. He got taken off Twitter and lost all of those followers. Now, obviously, he's taken. So Donald Trump had his Twitter list, and his Twitter list was all well and good. But when Twitter banned them, then all of a sudden, he lost that whole outlet. Now, if he had been working on his email list as well, all of those people would have been actually within his email list, so he could have then start, kept on marketing to them. So this is why, although Messenger is the best and it's going to bring you £7 per person per month, done averagely, not above average, anything like this, it's still going to be a case of we want to get them on our email list as well. Now, obviously, the open rates are lower, um, but we still want our little safeguards in there. Now, I actually tried to cheat this. Um, this is quite embarrassing. But I thought, why not? Everybody else has tried to cheat the system. And I got told all about this $1 per month per person that joined. And I thought this sounded awesome, right? So what I decided to do was there was a certain SaaS developer, um, and a lot of you probably know him. And what he was doing, he was selling out lists of various different businesses and all the different business CEOs. Now, that list was of about, I think it was 500,000 or something um, people. And this 500,000 um, CEOs list was selling, I think I paid about $300 for it, right? So it was it was pretty expensive, um, and it gave us all of these people. But I was still thinking about this $1 per person per list. So I added all these people to my um, autoresponders, um, and then what happened was, obviously, I got banned, right? Now, before I got banned, I did actually get a couple of sales. The next day when I opened up my email, there was a few sales through there. So I knew it was doing right, I just knew that then I had to build my own list, right? It's pointless trying to buy in somebody else's lists because you're going to spam them and then you're going to get banned. Now, I've been banned off GetResponse and, oh God, um, Send in Blue. 
as well. So that was the two I got banned from. And they always send you out the same thing that basically they don't agree with your marketing techniques. And so therefore they block your whole account, which means if you've built up a full sequence, then you have now lost that entire sequence. This is why I'll tell you about this. Um, this is why I'm now testing Groove because when you look inside of Groove, you've got a lot of dis different SMTP support, right? So that means if you get banned off Groove Mail, which is not really going to happen because they're in affiliate marketing, so they already understand exactly your marketing techniques. So if you're already, if you were going to get banned off Groove Mail, you've still got uh, SendGrid and you've still got Amazon, you've still got all these other email servers that you can use, which means that you're you're going to get a new postman. So once one postman says he's not going to go and deliver for you, you can just switch your SMTP over to another one, right? This is how we're going to build our list really fast. This is why I've got people working on desperately trying to get um, Groove Mail to talk to ours because it's going to be the most reliable and have five different sources. So what we need to get people on our list, um, most importantly, to build your own list, is we need a lead magnet. Now, a lead magnet can be almost anything. Now, what I've got here is Tattoo Do. When I first started off and I was in the tattoo shop, I wanted to have a load of business for my tattoo shop. So I started looking at Tattoo Do and seeing what they actually were giving away as their email list. And they do, they offer advice on tattoos and then they'll put you in, in touch with a tattoo professional. He'll design the tattoo for you. It's completely pointless. Um, all tattoo studios will do this for you. But it was a nice little way for them to get their emails. So what happened was you had an email address. They would then recommend a tattoo studio. And they built up their email list really quite quickly on this one. So what we need to do is we need to find a lead magnet that's going to be huge value for your dream clients, right? Now, when I'm saying dream clients, it doesn't matter what sort of industry you're in. There is some sort of lead magnet that you can give them. Um, we've got pizza shops around here that give away free cans of Coke or free toppings if you give them your phone numbers. Um, which then obviously they're going to point to an S SMS messaging send service and they're going to start contacting you about the various different SMS. Um, with our affiliate marketing side of things, I've given you a lot of books that you can then use and change the books around and put your own affiliate links on there, right? Called PLR. There's also the various different PLR stuff, which I think I touched on the other day. Um, all of these things can all be something that has such value for your future customers, your ideal customers, that you're going to want, they're going to want to give you their details. They want to exchange their email address for your thing, all right? So that's the important part. Everything you've got to think about in terms of money, um, in terms of value. So if you're giving something away with enough value, they are going to exchange their email address or their messenger with you to get this particular thing. So our lead magnet needs to be something that's going to stop them from scrolling, right? So when they're on their Facebook and they're giving it all this and they're fleeing through everything, we need to have something that's going to stop them from scrolling. So we're going to directly target their interest. Once we target their interest, then we're going to find a lead magnet, which don't worry, we're going to go into exactly how to build a proper lead magnet for your own particular niche. We need to find a lead magnet that immediately they're going to go, I need this. This is the very thing I've been looking for. This is going to help us. And these are the people who's put their hands up. Now, before when I was showing the opt-in page that I built, somebody come in and they asked if... Um, if I was trying to sell the affiliate mastermind, I was trying to sell the chatbot. Um, but then what we're doing is we're basically, we're getting people to put their hands up and we're getting people to show us that they're interested in this own, this thing that we've got for them, this thing that's going to help them in their journey. And what we're going to do with this is, as I said before, every email address is worth about $1 per person per month. Now, I've still got tattoo shops <clears throat> and our tattoo shop costs around about $1,000 per month in rent. That's not including electric, um, business rates, wages, everything like this. Around about $1,000 per month I'm spending on a tattoo shop that I might make two or 3000 back um, or whatever. Now, on my email list of 1,000 people, that will give me $1,000 a month just for having 1,000 people on my email list. So, thinking about this as a business proposition, I'm hoping you can start seeing why... It's worth you, if you have got money, to start spending a little bit of money to start building up your email list because these are the people who are going to keep on selling to religiously, time after time. We're going to set up an email flow. We're going to set up a chatbot flow that's going to get them engaged and get them wanting to get more value from you. Now, if the email, we are making $1,000 per person per month, right? So if we've got our things, all of our bits in place, all of our ducks in a row, or however you want to say it, 
This means we've now got a huge amount of money starting to come in only from a small number of people because of the amount of open rates. Because we're getting around about seven times open rate. And all we're going to do is we're going to actually go out and we're going to build this relationship. So we're going to build a relationship where they're going to start know, like, and trust us and start having us as their welcome expert in whatever it niches that you do. Now, I'm not saying when you, I'm saying about you having to be an expert in this niche, I'm not saying you have to go out and be an absolute, you know, everything about this nation. There's nothing ever going to go wrong. Obviously, there is a certain niche that you need to know. If you ever watch um, Catch Me If You Can, the film, mint film, um, all that he'd done was he just kept, what was it called, Abenaki? Um, he just kept one page ahead of the person, one chapter ahead of the people that he was going out and teaching. He was a university teacher, complete con man. And he only kept one chapter ahead. That's all you need to do is just one chapter ahead. We're not talking major amounts of stuff ahead. You don't need to be a complete industry expert. You can target down the beginners on your particular journey. Because what you actually do with this list is you're building up these people. Now, I have said a thousand, I've said one dollar per person. If you're in a local market, um, like my tattoo shop, I built an email list for my tattoo shop. And that was worth an awful lot more than one dollar per person per month because obviously I'm in a more localized area, which meant I get a lot more local people in and sell an awful lot more to them because it's easy to build a relationship if you're local. We're coming to the tattoo shop, we're building a relationship personal and on emails. So we every we know that every business needs leads and sales, right? We know that without leads and sales, and no business can survive. Right, so the first step to getting that is, like I say, the lead magnet, right? This is where we're going to lead everybody onto. So um, every business that's out there, every if you're working as an affiliate, every single thing that you're an affiliate for, you're promising some result, right? So if your target is, say, for example, um, let's say dentists, right? You're going to go out and you're going to sell affiliate products to dentists or other affiliate marketers. You're promising a particular result, right? So what you're going to do with this particular lead magnet, which we're going to go into massively another day, is we're going to give them the steps to get there, right? Now, hopefully you've already been there, you've already achieved the steps, so you know exactly which steps you took. So there could be any number of steps, which is going to be called your value ladder. And what we're looking for with our lead magnet is we're looking for one of the bits of value that is so sexy, people want to get that particular thing, right? So you've given it a sexy name, um, and from the sexy name, you then know that this is something people's going to want. So, for example, I could have um, said, right, okay, I'm going to solve all your traffic problems. I'll show you exactly how to get traffic into your affiliate marketing, and that would be my lead magnet. Now, of course, if you want to use any of these um, lessons that we're putting together, you can put them all together, you can edit them any way you want to, and you can use that as a mini lead magnet. So you can actually say, right, I'm going to give you the traffic lead magnet. I'm show you exactly how to get traffic once all this once these few are finished, you can go in any single part and then pick those particular parts of what you want to offer. And every lead magnet is tied into the result. So even though they've bought traffic, we know they've got other problems as well, right? So if they're having problems with traffic, I'll guarantee once you fix the traffic, then they're going to know, want to know about how to convert more. Um, they're going to want to know how to get more leads in the list. They're going to want to know all of these different things. So your lead magnet doesn't have to be as big as what mine Sometimes are. Um, sometimes I give away the whole farm. It can be as simple and as small as you possibly want it to be. It doesn't make any difference. The only thing that we're after, thank you. So many girlfriends, I'm bringing cups of tea in and whatnot as well. The only thing that we're after is it's got to have as much value, so much value that people want to give you their details. They want to give you their email address. They want to send you a messenger list. They want to do all of this little lot. And we're all going to do this through the opt-in pages. Right, so the opt-in page that I'll give you, the opt-in page we started building the other day, this is where we're going to give the lead magnet. Now, you've often seen these opt-in pages that are really basic, and they just say, basically, can we get your email and address? I don't believe that opt-in pages should be done the same way. I think you should actually try and give off as much value as possible. Because if you're already driving people to this opt-in page, if you're already getting as many leads to this opt-in page what you want, you don't want them to waste these leads. Um by not sending them exactly where they're after. You're not wanting to have them go to the opt-in page and then bounce off. You want them to actually stay in your opt-in page to read through what they're going to get and to start them on that journey, start them on the journey of actually trusting you. So we're not just going to do basic opt-in pages. From your opt-in page, you're then going to go to your bridge page, which is, unless you're going to 
chat ammo in which case because we've already got my front end. So from your opt-in page, you're then going to go to the bridge page, which is going to get them a little bit more involved within what it is that you're selling, right? Um, and the most important part is you're going to give them the exchange for what you have for their details. Remember the opt-in page, the most vital. Then we're going to need a leads funnel, which we've already got there for you as well. I'll put the link on the old one as well, and I'm going to hopefully finish off the new one today or tomorrow. And then we need the sales flow. Now, the sales flow is normally taken care of by the vendor, right? Vendor? I sound never surprised there. Right, normally taken care of by the vendor. So the vendor will have a load of sales flows. He'll have his sales page, and he'll have most of the emails set up. You'll also find swipe files quite often with different vendors. And I would obviously suggest getting your own swipe files together as well because you don't want the same swipe files everybody's sending out. What I mean by that is if you are sending out swipe files and the same swipe files what everybody else is going to have, what's going to happen is the various different email providers, if it's a big launch, are going to see those, you're going to see every email coming out that's exactly the same and they're not going to do a big delivery, right? Because they're going to know what's spam. They've already seen the letters, the words in the same order, all this stuff. That's why I never ever use swipe files. I always go into Jarvis and then redo them. Um, it makes life so much simpler. Um, and it, it gives you better results. Now, once we have those first set of um, sales emails going out, what we're going to do, I've said first set of sales emails, I actually shouldn't have. What we're going to do is we're going to build trust. We're going to build trust through the emails. So there's going to be a particular sequence of emails, which is normally called the soap opera sequence. Right, these particular, um, these particular, this particular sequence is going to start building trust and start building a relationship with your email list. So we're just going to start knowing exactly where we're going to. Because um, building trust is the most important thing. So that's what we're going to be working on. At the same time as what we're building trust. Now, this often happens as well. Um, I've done this myself when something's been successful. I then start slacking off getting me leads, right? Which is so embarrassing. So you start driving the traffic. What we're actually going for is we're going for more traffic constantly. So what we need to do is we need to set up all of these sequences to run automatically. We haven't got time to go in there and start making these sequences, start doing broadcasts, start doing all this little up. We want to concentrate on basically making sales. So what I've done, uh, because I'm an idiot, I had built up my traffic source to this one particular place. Everybody's coming to one place. I then started getting really busy within my funnel um, and trying to fulfill the different things. And then what happened is I neglected the traffic. And so for a few months, it was completely golden. And then my traffic drew started drying up because I didn't have all of my sequences in place, which was the stupidest thing I could have done. So you want to really start looking at scheduling your messages and your emails all out so you know exactly what's going to be coming, when it's going to be coming. And if you don't have an offer, then that's cool because you're still going to give these people value. So because you're giving these people value, it's back to um, jab, jab, right hook thing. You're giving people loads of value and that's why we're going to do it. So the important part about this is you must start taking action now. Right, it's. I know everybody keeps on getting all of these different courses, and I've watched this so many times. I've done it myself. I've even got a course. I'm not a thought was I'm going to watch the whole course, and then it's all going to click into place. And that's not the way that internet marketing works. The best way to do a course, run course advice. Best way to do a course is watch a little bit of the video, then go down and implement it. Now, obviously, this one's over only an overview, but I'm going to give you a worksheet just so that you know exactly what you're doing, um, so we can get this. So when we start building this lead magnet, we're going to know exactly 1,000% how we're going to do it. And we're going to make it really, really easy for ourselves to sell. Right. So I want you to do each video at a time. Um, pause the video. Watch the video. I will be editing this one. So you will have the various bit, different bits in. Now, ideally, I would take you through this worksheet, which is a bit of a bugger that me thing won't show. So I'm just going to point out the various bits that's in here. So this is going to be your ideal customer worksheet. Right, now, I've done a few of these worksheets before, and what I tend to find is, when you're trying to think of your ideal customer, there's a lot of people who's only going through the basics. What I'm going to say is, try and think of a name, an age, a gender, a marital status, if they've got children, where they're based, as your basic input. You're building up a person in your own mind's eye that is going to be the perfect customer for you. Because remember, we're going to continue serving them via our emails. Now, then I want you to go on a little bit further. Right, most people are going to get the basic info and they can do that no problem at all. Then they start losing themselves off a little bit. So next, I want the professional background. So what sort of occupation are the people 
doing who are your ideal customers? What occupation are they doing right now? What are they sick of? Are they fed up of the nine to five? Are the shop workers? Are they um, car salespeople? Well, car salespeople coming to me, Philip Morgan. What's the current income and what sort of income goals do they want? Now, most people, they hear about this 10K per month and everybody goes mad for this 10K per month. I, I don't understand why because it's terrible for taxing. Um, then you want your education. Are you wanting very educated people? Are you going high end? Are you going low end? Which, which scale of education are you looking for? And what is it that they call themselves? Do they call themselves an affiliate marketer? Do they call themselves a chiropractor? Um, do they call themselves a multi-level marketer? Are they an e-commerce? What is it that they call themselves? Who do they relate to? Um, the next thing, source some information. Where do they get their information from? So is there any particular books that they read? Now, Amazon's a great place to go here and look through the reviews and actually start looking at the bad reviews. Right? The bad reviews will give you an awful lot of their pain points. It's awesome. And if you know the pain, pain points, uh, so what do they read any magazines or any sort of magazines that they're into? I know magazines are dying a death at the moment, which is pretty sad. Have there any online blogs that they follow? Now, if they're into digital marketing, there's a very, very high chance they're going to be following Neil Patel, um, Russell Brunson, Dan Kennedy, um, Mike Filsane, various different people like this. And if they are following these people, these are the people you need to be watching and seeing what they're actually doing. What are they doing that's drawn the audience to them? Right. Is there any conference or events? So you've got the Two Comma Club conference. You've got the Marketers Cruise. You've got all of these different conferences. And you can go out and you can see these posts and you can see the people who's interacting with the posts. Then you can start finding similarities between these people. You can also go out and check ads within Facebook and then see what sort of demographics is looking at these ads. It's awesome. Facebook gives you so much detail. Um, what masterminds is that to follow? Oh, again, the same sort of people. Um, it's the same as the who. Who are the masterminds? Who is it that they love to follow? Now, next, you want results and values. Now, these ones are the ones that's going to make you into a different level of making money, right? So what results is it that they're looking for? What is it that they're striving to achieve? If you can join them somewhere in their journey where they're already at, trying to get this result, you're going to have a huge advantage, right? And what is their values? What is it that they value the most? Um, you, one thing to remember here, when you're looking at the results and values, don't try and think of their long-term results necessarily, right? A very, very good thing to do is think about their immediate pain. What pain are they in right now? So let's say, for example, that we're going to go for brand new affiliate marketers. Well, the pain they're in right now is they can't make a sale. They're having hell on trying to get a sale. Um, now we know that's to do with traffic. It's to do with converting the ad to with their opt-in pages. It's to do with the follow-up sequences. But that's not what they're wanting to know. They're wanting to know how do they solve their immediate pain point straight away, right? So we're going to show them how to sell more. We're going to tell them, go in there, make a review, do this, this is how we do a review, this is the best way to do it. And this is the way that we're going to actually start showing them that you're an expert in your particular field. Um, so list as many possible challenges and pain points as possible. That's next in this whole little um, page thing that you're going to have here. What's their objections and what's their false beliefs? Now, there's a massive, massive amount of objections. Um, it takes so much money. You've got to pay for traffic. Uh, you've got to... Funnels don't work. I love that objection. Um, chatbots don't work. I never use the term chatbots. I'm never trying to go out and sell chatbots. In fact, I was thinking of this last night. And I thought sales flow sounds better. A little bit like sales funnel, but we're going to go into sales flow. Because it sounds like a better thing to start selling people. If you start selling people about chatbots, they do not care less about anything as a chatbot, it makes no sense to them. They, they don't understand what a chatbot is. They think it's an automated thing that's really annoying. And when they're not built out correctly, then they are really annoying. Um, but we're going to show them that a chatbot is going to get their sales flow going. So it's going to flow them down a particular route and then we we'll fork off to all the different um, routes. I think he said something different. Um, to all the different routes to our different solutions, right? So we might think their pain point is brand new. Sorry, so you might be thinking that their immediate problem is that they can't make a sale. But when they go into your chatbot, what you can do is you can ask them, what's your immediate problem? Is it traffic? Is it you can't make a sale? Is it this? And from their answers on there, you're actually also gaining better knowledge of people as a whole. So when they're coming in, you've now got all this knowledge. So you can now build an opt-in page that's directly targeted towards these people. And obviously, you know where you've got these people from. So now you've got... You've got all the answers that you need and you've got the people where they've come from 
we can now start basically printing money. So what level of awareness are these people at? Are they cold? Um, are they just problem aware, which is a cold audience? So they know they've got a problem, they just don't know how to fix it. And they haven't got no idea how to fix their problem. Is it a warm audience, which means that they know there's a problem, they know there's a solution out there, but they don't know what the solution is, which is um, the whole warm audience thing. Or are there hot audiences, right? People who know who you are, they know that you've got a, a solution to the problem, they just need a little bit of a push to get the solution in there, right? So these are the things I want you to really go through. But I want you to get these done. This should take you no more than an hour. Um, so you can go through all these in an hour. Just brainstorm with yourself. I'm going to give you this um, file, obviously. Please copy and just copy it and make a copy for yourself. And next, what I want you to do is start looking at some of your competition. What is it that they're using as lead magnets? Right now, one I love to go in and we'll call a flow hack because I don't want to call a funnel hack because obviously that's um, click funnels. But the thing I love to go in and do is I like to go in and see what they're giving away as their lead magnets and then make a sales flow that's going to give away a very, very similar thing. And we're going to continue to lead them down that path. Now, obviously, with the sales funnel, they're leading them down that path where they are going from sales funnel to bridge page to whatever the offer is. We can do further. We can go from lead magnet to sales funnel. Then we'll have our chatbot pop back in. Then we'll ask them the questions. Then from the questions, we can lead them down the exact path that you want to lead them to. This is where you're going to start getting the $7 per month. Hopefully, right? <laughs> if you follow along and actually take action. Um, I will be putting up the sheet as a link underneath um, so that hopefully you guys can get the link and what I'll do is I'll edit this right now we'll have it up very shortly so we've actually got it quite clean I'll put up the various sheets that you need to be seeing as well okay guys thanks very much for watching and speak soon